It's not like learning from a book. You, 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 you don't just learn it, revise it, and, and then you know it. Uh, when you're training, you know, somebody can, you're, whoever's teaching you can show you uh, how to do it, and you could do that part repeatedly for a day, two days, ten days, whatever it may be, and you just can't get it, and then the next day you can get it, and you don't really know what's changed as such, you know, it's just now you know how to do it, and it's all about feel, it, it's just how you interpret the glass and, and the flame, and, and, and as it really is a, a how you feel, because what happens is there isn't usually a, a right or a wrong way to do an actual job, everybody has their own little ways of doing it, their own tricks, and so by watching or working or speaking to other glass blowers, they might tell you a trick, so to speak, and it's just something that you haven't tried before or whatever that makes a, a certain operation easier or quicker. Or There's different aspects and different types of glassware, like working quartz is a lot different from working Pyrex. Uh, working large glass is a lot different from small glass, so it, it really when you learn, you try and get a foundation as much as possible that you can transfer each one, but a lot of it does come down to repetition and how much you do the one thing. You, you obviously, the more you do it, you'll get very good and a lot faster. So I worked, I started with a company called Scotia Glass Technology, which was a private industry company. Uh, I trained there, basically you train under a master glass blower uh, for five years. Uh, before you're considered qualified, doing it that way, it works slightly different in North America. But uh, that's what I did. We did a wide variety of glassware from everything that we do here. Uh, we also did industrial glassware, which is large scale process glassware. Uh, not quite as much fun, uh, but had to be done. So what it was called when I did it was called a, a YTS, was a youth training scheme. Basically, it was uh, you were hired by a company as an apprentice. I was the youngest apprentice. There was three apprentices, say like a year, two years, three years in front of me. And basically, the gentleman that started the company, he was a glass blower at a university that closed down. And there's there is and still is a severe shortage of glass blowers, scientific glass blowers. So the only way for him to get a workforce, so to speak, was to train people from zero up, So, and that's what he did. Most universities, or a lot of universities, especially smaller ones, may not have a glass blower now. There's a lot less wet chemistry being done these days, um, which obviously affects how much stuff we actually do. So here, <coughs> we basically... Uh, Specifically, we, we focus on the chemistry department, uh, but we also do work for any other department that needs us and outside work, but most of it is for the chemistry department. We do any custom glassware that they need for us that is within their means, and we also offer repair services for their labware. And we don't actually manufacture a lot of labware because it's mass produced, it, it can be purchased usually cheaper, uh, but Rather than throw it out, we can repurpose it and repair it in a lot of cases for a lot less money than it would be to, to replace it. Basically, we buy our glass in, it comes in five feet lens, different diameters of glass tubing and glass rod. And depending on what we're making, we shape the glass by heating, blowing, constricting, pulling. We've got graphite tools for forcing the glass where we want to go. So basically, most of what you see starts off as a tube and we shape it to what we want. We buy in certain, certain pieces, you know, joints and other stuff that are, are pre-manufactured, but uh, pretty much everything we do, a lot of it comes from glass to me. Everything in glass blowing is about preparation. You know, some of the jobs that we turn away from here aren't necessarily that we, we don't have the skill to do it, but we don't have the equipment to do it. And we're not gonna get it because we don't do enough of them to, to warrant it. A lot of times we can do what you want, but you know, you're know you wanting a piece that's $200 and the piece that you've drawn here is $2,000. You know, they're overly complex for what they need it to do. So you get the people like that that come with the drawing, you get the people that come with an idea, 
uh, it, it ranges completely, you know. It's one of those things you kind of need the person and you together. It's really hard when you get a phone call and somebody says, I've got this piece and it's broken or I need this and it's like, you know, until I see it, physically see it, even a picture on the internet doesn't always help. Uh, until we actually talk to each other and see the piece, if it's like a repair, it's, it's really hard to judge. So this is a custom piece that we made. And these sort of things are, are fun to make because they truly are custom. Like there's, there's nothing commercially available that did totally what this person wanted. Uh, it's interesting, it's fairly complex uh, in some ways, so it's a challenge. It's always nice to get a job that's a challenge rather than sort of the, the humdrum of things. And then this person eventually moved on. I do actually believe she went to the States and she actually was kind enough to bring it back and say, what would you like me to do with this? Because she knew it was quite an interesting piece. And I said, well, I'd like to keep it. So it's been sitting here ever since.